I could talk on parent, daughter, and son relationships. The Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother. But young people have a hard time forgiving their parents. They forget what an agony and what a burden their parents carry for them. And parents sometimes forget that they were once young themselves. And there should be a bridge. And the bridge can be Christ. Because Christ can help you to forgive. As Christ forgives you of your sins, you can help Christ can help you to forgive your parents and help you parents to forgive your children and to love them because they're the closest neighbors you'll ever have. And they come under this when Jesus said, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus said, a certain man. Jesus believed in the worth of the individual. And Jesus spent most of his time with individuals, not just great crowds. And it's always the individual that he was concerned about. He said that he sees the sparrow fall. He has the hairs of your head numbered. The Bible teaches that God loves you as an individual. He sees you as though you were the only person living tonight. And Jesus said a certain man. He loves people. And Jesus hugs us one by one because he loves us. And greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. And the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross. And while he was on the cross, he was thinking about you because he was God. He could look down the centuries and call you by name on that cross and say, I love you. I will forgive you if you will come to me. Sin has made us dead in our trespasses and in our sins. The scripture says, she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. You see, that means that you can be alive physically, but spiritually your soul, your spirit that lives inside of you, that's the part of you going to live forever. That's the part of you that dreams and thinks and the real you that's going to live forever. That part of you is dead. It's dead toward God. You don't have any desire to read the Bible and pray and witness and live a good life. You have a desire sometimes, but you're unable to do it. Why? Because your soul, your spirit is dead. It needs to be made alive. And that's what Christ can do tonight. He can make it alive. He can take a dead person here tonight and make you alive. And I want to tell you this, religion doesn't save anybody. Religion is man's attempt to reach God. Christianity is God's attempt to reach man. There's a vast difference. Jesus said, ye are they which justify themselves before men, but God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Oh yes, we can be religious leaders, but be insincere. And I told the other night about the, the bishop of a church that asked to see me and he said, I'm a, I have a doctor's degree from the university, I'm a bishop in the church, but he said, I really do not know for sure that I know Christ. And he knelt down and he wept and accepted Christ as his Lord and Savior and he was sure for the first time in his life. He'd had to become like a little child all over again. A poll was taken recently in New Jersey that said 92% of the people said they hoped to go to heaven, but most of them were unsure, they were not certain. Now the Bible says you can be sure. You mean to say, Billy, that I can know that I'm saved, I can know I'm forgiven, I can know I'm going to heaven? Yes, you can know it. Paul said, I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. John said, these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life. You can know it. And it's a wonderful thing to walk down the street or to go to bed tonight and know that every sin is forgiven and that if you died during the night, you're going to go to heaven. How? Not by works of righteousness which we've done, but according to his mercy he saved us. I'm going to heaven because of the mercy of God. I'm going to heaven because of the grace of God. I don't deserve it. I deserve judgment in hell. I'm a sinner like you, but I have repented of my sins and received Christ into my Savior and I'm trusting in the cross of Christ. When Christ laid down his life upon the cross, when he laid down his life upon the cross that made all the sacrifices made in the Old Testament, made them good and acceptable to God because they were only symbolic of that which was to come in Jesus Christ because Christ's death was planned before the foundation of the world. Because 
God could look forward and see you and me as lawbreakers and sinners in need of a Savior. And he was offering his own son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die upon that cross as the great Lamb of God. And then the scripture says this, that if you break one commandment, you've broken them all. So I have to say, I've broken all the commandments. And yet if you've broken only one commandment, you've broken them all, and that makes you a sinner, and no sinner can be accepted in the sight of God. You must be clothed in righteousness to come into the presence of God. God is a holy God. Yes, these people were impotent. They had no power to keep the law. You see, that's the reason I cannot say that I live the Christian life. I can't live it. I can't live by the golden rule. Christ has to live it through me and in me. That's the reason when you come to Christ, He gives you the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit came in this age to help us live the life that Christ taught and to obey Him. Blind, You say, well, I'm not blind. You may have 20-20 vision, but your spiritual eyes are blind. You're blind to the fact that you're a sinner before God. You're blind to your spiritual needs because the Bible says that you were supernaturally blinded. Do you know who blinded you? Listen to this in 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The God of this world is the devil. Satan blinds us. He puts blinders on us. Only the Holy Spirit can remove that blindness. That's a supernatural act of God. When you receive Christ, He removes those blindfolds. Then it says the halt were there. Who are they? Well, they're the cripples who are spiritually and psychologically crippled. They have no strength, no, no strength to obey their conscience. Why? Well, you would like to read the Bible or you'd like to pray, but you're just too crippled to do it. Too spiritually crippled. You don't have any desire to pray. No desire to read the Bible. No desire really to go to church. You go just because it's the thing to do maybe or because your parents want you to go. You know, Christ will not let you be a halfway Christian. And there's some people trying it though. They've got one foot in the kingdom of God and trying to keep the other foot in the world. They've got them in both camps. And neither one is happy. Step on one side or the other. Go all out for Christ. The Bible teaches that there are three little men living inside of us. There's the intellect the emotion and the will. Now by wisdom, by your intellect alone, you cannot come to Christ. There is that step of faith. Timothy Dwight, who was president of Yale until the latter part of the last century, the second Timothy Dwight said that truth can only be dimly seen by the intellect. And how right he was, just dimly seen you can never come to the truth by the intellect alone. It must be faith. There is that step of faith that you must take and receive by faith.